Hey, welcome to the Dropship Podcast. Today, we're going to give you five tips for an awesome high-ticket dropshipping website. Five things that you should do on your business if you want to have success as a high-ticket dropshipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like more uh, the feel here is like a whole of website thing. So like, what are the things you need to have on your website as a whole? Not just the product pages, which we tend to talk about a lot, but like your whole website, you know, what's the things that are going to lend to, I think the experience of your website, um, no matter what page, you know, your visitors on really. And I think there are, there are definitely some key things that, um, particularly if we see people coming from a dropshipping background that is not high ticket dropshipping that I, I often see, like I get a lot of people who are like, oh, I've got a dropshipping site and I'm, you know, selling jewelry or something and I've just started it and I look at it and I say, man, there's just some things missing from this website. And I think a lot of the things we're going to talk about here kind of lead to the customer experience more than anything, right? Um, you, you want to make your website as simple as possible and as easy as possible for your customer to use. And the first one of those um, is having a big ass search bar, as Ben says, um, and so you've been you know, to Amazon. Hold on, hold on. I wrote that in the sheet. You were, <laughs> you were supposed to make this sound better. Uh, big ass search bars. In fact, what I did write in there. Yeah, but I, I don't talk like you. So um, <laughs> I'm not American. We don't say ass. ass. What, do you say? what do you say? I just said it. Uh, so you've all, we've all been to Amazon, right? Um, you know, something Amazon's famous for, one of the things they pioneered is that massive search bar in their header. Why is that there? It's there because they sell a heck of a lot of products and it's hard to find all of their products using a traditional navigation. And they assume that most people come to their website knowing what they're looking for, having some rough idea of what they're looking for. And the easiest way to get to it is if they can just pop it into a search bar like you would. And this behavior is because that's what people do on search engines, right? That's where it's come from. It comes from Google. Everybody is trained to use a big visible search bar because Google and other search engines pioneered that and that's what how people have got used to the internet so when somebody sees a search bar they immediately know what it's there for and they know they don't have to worry about navigating things and anything so if you've got a big visible it's got to be visible right and i'm not talking about one of those some people say oh i've got that little magnifying glass thing you can click up here in the corner of my website that's not good enough yes that is a search functionality but you, you have to remember that people's attention is measured in seconds here when they land on your website. They don't want to be looking for little icons to click to do something. Everything's got to be big, obvious, easy to understand. So a big search bar, uh, if you're using a quality Shopify theme like Superstore, which we recommend, uh, it comes with one built in, which will show both on mobile and on desktop. Um, there are, if you're using a different theme, there are apps that can add this. And then you want that search bar to be backed up by uh, like, the ability to produce good search results in that search bar, which are rich search results, which will show people, you know, products if they if the product is the relevant or, or content pages, if you've got content pages that might be relevant to their search. And so there's a couple of apps that we can uh, recommend um, uh, for Shopify. So um, uh, smart filter app and, oh, it's, sorry, it's a uh, live search and smart, smart filter app. Uh, Ben's going to link that up in the show notes, no doubt. Um, that is a good one that you can use to give you that um, that functionality, but that's definitely a must-have. What's what's your second must-have, Ben? Yeah, I'm just realizing now that most of these have to do with that short attention span. You call it mm. lazy, whatever you want. No one's actually going to go any further than they need to go on your website. So if you have a big ass search bar, uh, they can easily search what they're looking for. They're on your site to shop anyway. Give them exactly what they want. Also give them a, as I wrote in the sheet here, big ass phone number as well. Like the people yep. who are buying high ticket products often want to speak to somebody before they spend that kind of money. You should encourage that. You should encourage to get someone on the phone so that you can bust their objections and help them get the product that they're looking for in their hands. Um, pro tip here. Don't say, if you want, I can take your order right now say, Go ahead and give me your credit card numbers and we'll get this order uh, placed for you right away. Like give them the instructions to move them forward, but make sure you have a big ass phone number on your website so that they can easily call you whenever they want to. I like to do tap to call. So if you can get a developer to program in a big ass uh, phone number in the header on your mobile device so that they can just tap it and call you, uh, that's what I like to do.
Yeah, yeah, right. And it seems once again, so many people come to dropshipping with thinking, I don't want to do much customer service. Isn't this like a sit on the beach kind of thing where I don't have to do anything? And like, that's one, I mean, we've said it so many times, that's not the reality, but you do want people to call you. Your conversion rate of people who call your business is so much higher than people who never have that touch point with your business, right? As soon as you get somebody on the phone, not only can you serve them, help them, but you can also sell to them, right? And and person-to-person -person selling is still the most effective way to sell something. Uh, so definitely getting people on the phone. And I think it's not just... Um, not these things we're talking about are not just about uh, helping people because people's attention spans are shorter. It's definitely about that. It's also about conversion rate optimization, a lot of these things. So the thing you're trying to do just as a side note on your site is get people to the point of purchase in as few steps as possible, right? So you don't want them um, going through some, you know, really convoluted path through your website to get to the product that they're actually looking for. The more you can shorten up the number of clicks and the number of steps they have to go through, the higher your conversion rate on your site is going to be. Hey, obviously you're interested in high ticket dropshipping, wondering what you're going to sell. That's usually what people think about long before they ever purchase a course or even get started. John and I want to help you with that. We're running a five day challenge. Check it out at dropshipbreakthrough.com forward slash five, five days. You'll figure out exactly what you're going to sell and you'll be ready to start your high ticket dropshipping journey when you're done. The third thing I think we're looking for here though is, is great headlines. And once again, Ben, you're absolutely right. This is like people don't really, people skim websites right these days once again attention spans are shorter it's measured in seconds like sometimes singular seconds and so great having great headlines on your website whether that's on your collection pages um, sub headlines where you've got content you know like nice big sub headlines that i think yes you know we use those for search engine optimization as well but give the reader a clear idea of what's coming after that headline enables people to stop the skimming and actually focus in on the things that they need to see and understand on your website that are going to help them to then go ahead and purchase a product. Yeah, a few tips around there. I love the superstore theme because you can add a little section up at the top by the add to cart button. Turns out a lot of people don't scroll. They only want to see that. So if you can get your li quick little blurb in there of like everything they need to know about this product right there so they don't have to scroll. I love that about Superstore. And then your headlines too. Like people are scrolling. And if they can tell themselves the story of the product by simply reading your headlines, and of course they're going to contain keywords again. Like John said, we're doing good mm -hmm. SEO here. But if they can read a story on headlines and that's it, and they're like, that should give them all the information they need. And if they need to dive in deeper, they know which section it's inside of. Um, also selective bolding inside your paragraphs, like select so that they like people are, aren't going to read the whole paragraph. It just looks like a wall of text. No one's reading that. Uh, and so if you can selective bold inside of those headlines to get people to take away the information they need to take away, uh, that's going to go a long way. John, you threw this next one in here. Um, I, I added the word ass for you, of course. This is called kick-ass USP. What do you got for this? What do you mean by getting a kick-ass USP on your website? Yeah. So like one of the things when, when you're doing high ticket dropshipping, you're not the only person who's selling the products that you're selling, right? Other people are selling them. There are other places usually that might be some exceptions where you have an exclusive arrangement, but usually your customers can buy the product elsewhere, whether that's offline or online, you're going to have competition for that product. And so one of the questions in your customer's mind, whether they're subconsciously or consciously is not just, is this the right product for me to buy? It's, who is the best person to buy it from, right? And yes, they're going to get a sense of that just from your website and, you know, how, how knowledgeable you seem and are you an authority in your space and all of those sort of things absolutely lead into that. But once again, people's attention span is short. They're only there for a short amount of time. And so they need to understand the message about why they should buy from you and not your competitors like that fast. So they need to be able to see that message no matter where they are on your website. So if they're on your homepage, it needs to be visible fairly high up the homepage, what, whatever it is, right? And uh, we're not going to dive, I mean, we, that's entirely another conversation about how you come up with this for, uh, if we haven't already touched that, that'd make a good uh, future episode, but people need to be able to see whatever that message is. And sometimes it can just be one thing. It might be three reasons why somebody should buy from you. It might be five. Like it's going to be entirely dependent on your niche, your market. There's no, there's no one size fits all answer here, but they need to be able to see it on the product page. 
high up the product page. They need to be able to see it on the home page, high up the home page. They need to be able to see it on your about us page all over your site. You can put it on your collection pages. Like what is the message you want people under to understand about why they should buy from you? Because it's not going to be the product, right? You're not in control of the product. It's not your product when you're drop shipping. So you can't rely on the product to be the reason why somebody's buying from you because you're the only person that sells that product, right? And the product is amazing. That's not your USP. Your USP is what's great about your business and why your business is better to buy from than anybody else. Well, I look forward to that episode, John, because I think I have some things to learn from you on that front. Uh, so we'll have to do an episode on USPs in the future. Uh, the last, the last one of the five here brings it back to simplicity. Like you have to have a simple and straightforward menu. If, if, if especially on mobile, you can't just mm -hmm. pop out that hamburger and immediately know where you want to go on your website within ideally one click, but two clicks maximum. Number one, that's Google robot. Google's robot wants that. Uh, and your customers want that. If they pop open that slider menu and there's 47 options, um, they're going to just run away. They're not going to click on anything, right? They're not definitely not going to read it. It's too small on their phone. They're going to run away. So I would recommend uh, building a menu specifically for mobile that makes it much more readable and then really try to simplify the menu that you do have on your site. I think people get too complex, make it too convoluted, and that's just going to drive customers away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about every extra click you add to get somebody to the right place. Like you might feel like you're being helpful, but th there are all sorts of research things that have been done into this, that every extra click somebody has to make before they can purchase something decreases the conversion rate on that website. Uh, and so, you know, and every layer you add in, you know, because I think a lot of the time when we're creating menus, particularly in the beginning, you're, you're assuming, you know, what people want to see to understand what's in like, how you should subdivide those things. And I think people overthink it a lot of the time and add in too much complexity, which is actually confusing for customers. So I'm, yeah, I, I'm 100% with you. Two clicks maximum is, is my rule personally, if I'm building a website. 